If you keep tarantulas, scorpions, isopods, or really any exotic pet that lives in an enclosure with substrate, you have or will eventually see these tiny little insects crawling around that are called mites. In the tarantula hobby, or really just the arachnid and invertebrate hobby in, in general, there has been an increased panic or worry anytime anyone finds the slightest hint of mites in any of their enclosures. Sometimes they find them crawling around in the substrate or up the side of the glass of the enclosure. Occasionally they're floating in the water dish, and rarely they've even found them on the tarantulas or scorpions themselves. And the hysteria is even more increased when a tarantula dies from an unknown cause, and upon closer examination, you find a bunch of mites on the tarantula itself. And the seemingly logical explanation is that mites must have killed my tarantula. Though this is rarely the case, it has not stopped this urban legend from tearing through the hobby, causing keepers, especially new keepers, to panic at the first sight of mites and go to drastic measures to eliminate them, sometimes even at the peril of their own pet tarantula. When in reality, most species of mites are not only harmless, but virtually unavoidable. Now, a lot of this information I came about in an article written by Ray Price, who studies zoology at the University of Southampton Biological Sciences. I will leave a link to his article down below in the description as well as some links that he cites. So let's start off with examining exactly what mites are. But first, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video for not just supporting me and this channel, but for helping me make videos like this that will get information out there to a wider audience. But that typically go unaddressed here on YouTube because they're not clickbaity or really they just don't generate a whole lot of views. But nonetheless, is still important information. So a huge thanks goes to Simply Spiders for sponsoring today's video. Simply Spiders is an online tarantula dealer here in the United States based out of the St. Louis area. And they offer a wide variety of tarantula species from spiderlings to full grown adults. They also have four levels of mystery boxes, which include multiple sizes of different tarantulas and potentially a few dry good items. And everything they sell is now shipped anywhere in the USA at the flat rate of $43 for overnight shipping. So check out the Midwest's number one trusted source for captive bred tarantulas at simplyspiders.org and use the code DISCOUNT to save 15% off your entire order. Now this discount code may only be available for a limited time, so be sure to place your order soon. All right, so first things first, what are mites? There are many different types of mites in the world. Almost 50,000 different species have been described so far, but scientists believe there could be upwards of a million different species. Mites are everywhere. They are in the soil outside, in your carpet, your mattress and pillows, in your walls, and even on your skin right now. Many types of mites are so small we can't really see them with our eyes and need powerful magnification to see them clearly. But the mites we find in our enclosures are typically soil or wood mites. Mites are arthropods closely related to ticks and spiders. Now, these mites are scavengers that usually make their home in cocoa fiber, peat moss, potting soil, or really any other type of substrate commonly used in enclosures. They are attracted to organic rotting matter such as leaves, moss, and wood. Most of the time, they are already present in your substrate when you initially buy it from the store, even if it has been sterilized. But if you bake or dry out the substrate before using it, nine times out of 10, mites will eventually find their way back into that enclosure. Commonly, mites get confused with springtails, and you can see posts on social media of someone concerned about mites in their enclosure when what they're really seeing is actually just springtails. Mites have eight legs a rounded, oval-shaped body that is unsegmented, no eyes, and come in a variety of colors. But typically the ones we see are white, tan, or brown. Springtails only have six legs, short antennae, and soft, elongated, or roundish bodies with small eyes, and they're usually white or gray. Springtails are often considered very beneficial and even necessary in a bioactive enclosure, as they eat mold, fungus, and decaying matter in that enclosure. Though they look similar and have similar diets, there is a definite difference between mites and springtails, and the seemingly overwhelming opinion in the hobby right now is that springtails are good and mites are dangerous. But are mites really dangerous to your tarantulas? One of the downsides of keeping tarantulas and other inverts is that there hasn't been a whole lot of research into the diseases or medical issues that your tarantula, scorpion, or other arthropod may actually come across. 
let alone any way to medically diagnose or treat any issues that they may have. In fact, it is usually difficult to realize that there is a problem with your pet spider until it is too late. Impaction, neurological issues, bacteria, viruses, developmental issues, bad molts, desiccation, parasites, and unintentional poisoning are all known threats and causes of death for tarantulas that a lot of times aren't identified until after the spider has passed away, or at least not until there are visible signs of a problem, at which point it is is typically too late to do anything to save them, if there was anything you could do to begin with. A good keeper will always investigate the cause of death to make sure they don't make the same mistake again. And upon looking closer, they may see they were in a good enclosure with optimal conditions. They were fed regularly with access to fresh water, no ruptures or damage, and really no clue as to why their pet tarantula suddenly died. Except for one thing, they noticed mites crawling all over their tarantula, around the fangs or mouth parts. And the logical assumption is, mites must have killed my tarantula. While this is an understandable conclusion to draw under the circumstances, for the most part, it is incorrect. The most common mites found in these enclosures are soil or wood mites. There are many different species that all look very similar, but one thing they all have in common is that they will not harm your tarantula. These mites are just under one millimeter in size and typically are tan, white, or even a light brown color. This makes them very difficult to see in the substrate, but when on your tarantula, in their water dish, or climbing the glass of the enclosure. They can easily be spotted if you're looking for them. And they can cause many keepers a lot of stress. But these mites only eat mold, fungi, or decaying organic matter. They play a pivotal role in nature by helping break down organic material in decomposition, which is why they are commonly found on the bodies of dead arachnids, especially if your tarantula is found on the substrate in the enclosure. These mites are also phoretic, which means they will climb on other animals, like your tarantula or scorpion, and use them as a vehicle to move to other areas to spread their offspring, and sometimes even to eat some of their food, which is why occasionally they can be spotted around the mouth parts of your healthy tarantula. But they are not eating your tarantula, just the leftovers around their fangs. They aren't sucking their blood or slowly munching on their exoskeleton either, though there are some mites that will do this. They are called parasitic mites, and they do feed on arachnids and other inverts. But these types of mites are extremely selective as to which animal they will feed on and are very rare in the hobby and almost non-existent in captive bred populations. Typically, you only see parasitic mites in wild-caught specimens because they are removed from their natural environment where this specific species of mite has evolved over time to feed on this specific species of tarantula in that specific location, which is just another in a long list of reasons to not purchase wild-caught tarantulas or capture a tarantula in the wild and bring it into your collection. If this is a necessity for some reason, then the arachnid needs to be kept in quarantine away from your other inverts until you are sure there are no parasitic mites. Parasitic mites are easy to spot because they look much different from your typical wood and soil mites as they are much larger and usually are a different color. So now you're asking yourself, how do I get rid of the mites? And the short answer is, you don't. As we discussed earlier, mites are everywhere and they move around constantly in search of a new plentiful food source. You will drive yourself insane trying to constantly eliminate all mites from your enclosures and possibly cause your tarantula a lot of unnecessary stress, which could be more harmful than any mite could have ever been to them. Essentially, any enclosure with any type of natural substrate or wood will have some mites, though in small numbers, so you probably will never even notice them. But in some circumstances, this small number can get out of hand and turn into a full-blown infestation, which may, depending on the severity, cause your tarantula some stress or at the very least, just look unsightly. No one really wants their tarantula enclosures to be crawling with mites, even if they are not harmful to your tarantula. So how do you get rid of them? You can't use chemicals or insecticides to kill them because as we went over earlier, mites are arthropods and related to spiders. So the same poison that would kill mites will also kill your tarantula or other arachnids. An infestation in your enclosure is due to the fact that they have access to a lot of food and moisture. As usual, the best offense is a good defense. So regular Literally spot clean your enclosure after feeding. Remove any uneaten prey parts, dead prey, molts, or any rotting organic matter from the enclosure on a regular basis. Keep the humidity as low as possible, especially for arid species. Keep a water bowl full for your tarantula to drink from, but try to avoid 
oversaturating the substrate to the point it takes weeks or months to dry out. If you are keeping a tropical species that is moisture dependent and the substrate needs to be slightly damp, just add a large colony of springtails to the enclosure. They will compete with the mites for the food source and win. So any mites will die off or their numbers will be so low they're virtually unseen. Some smaller species of isopods that don't need a lot of calcium can also be beneficial in helping to keep the number of mites down in an enclosure as well. Just be careful what species of isopods you choose, as some can be bothersome to tarantulas. Dwarf whites are typically known as a safe option, though there are some other species available as well. If it is too late to be proactive and you're forced to be reactive, then the first thing to try is to drastically reduce the humidity in the enclosure. Let the substrate dry out completely for a week or two, and this will typically kill off most of the mites. They absorb their moisture through their skin, so if they are not in a humid environment, they aren't able to stay hydrated. You can also put in a slice of zucchini, cucumber, carrot, or any similar natural food as the mites will be attracted to it as a source of food and water. Remove the food and throw it away and replace it with a fresh piece once or twice a day. And this will help expedite the removal of the mites from the enclosure. Be sure to stay on top of your maintenance and remove any other food source from the enclosure as well. Also, you may want to avoid removing your tarantula from their enclosure and completely changing out the substrate if at all possible, as this will cause a lot of unneeded stress to your tarantula, and if the underlying issues have not been addressed, the mite issue will return in no time at all. Now, if these suggestions are not working well for you or not working as fast as you would like, there is one other option you have to get rid of these unsightly mites, and that is to fight fire with fire. What I mean is you can introduce predatory mites into your enclosure that will actually eat the mites that are causing you problems, and they will not bother or harm your tarantula or other inverts. Species like Phytocilius persimilis or Stratio lalap schematis can easily be purchased online from Amazon, eBay, and most gardening or bioactive websites, but they are not cheap. I will leave a link below in the description for a few sites that have these predatory mites for sale. These mites are safe and effective, as they will eradicate any mites in your enclosure and then die off once their food source has been depleted. But this method does have its drawbacks. Once the predatory mites have eaten all the other mites in one enclosure, they may not stay in just that one enclosure. They have been known to move from enclosure to enclosure across people's entire collection. Eating all the mites and moving on to the next one and even getting into potted plants and enclosures you might not really want them in. These predatory mites don't just eat other mites, but springtails as well. So any enclosure you have introduced springtails into to help keep out mites will have to be repopulated with a new springtail colony after the predatory mites have died off. Especially any bioactive enclosures you keep in the same room as these predatory mites are being released in, they may find your bioactive enclosure a smork board and leave you without any springtails in it at all. Needless to say, any springtail colonies you have should be moved out of this area, probably in a different room or a different part of your house. This will protect them from being overrun by the predatory mites. But once the food source has been depleted, these predatory mites will disappear and you can safely begin adding springtails to any enclosure that might need them. So in short, finding some wood mites or soil mites in your enclosure is not something to be overly concerned about. Keeping the enclosure clean of boluses, uneaten prey, old molds, or any rotting organic matter will go a long way in keeping your enclosure free from a mite infestation. And if you already have an infestation, the steps we have gone over should clear up this issue in no time at all. But an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of the cure. So stay on top of your husbandry and you won't have much to worry about. If you want to see my video on protecting your tarantulas from ants, which are a much greater foe, just click this video right here. And if you want to see my latest this video, just click this thumbnail right there. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Hit that like button if you've ever seen a mite in your enclosure, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>